Hey, what's going on my friend? Are you looking for a new sideboard or buffet for your home or office space? Well, stay tuned because I'm gonna be doing a review for the Tompkins 52 inch two drawer sideboard by Rosedorf Park. Hey guys, welcome back. NT here from Prime Spaces where we assemble all sorts of home and office furniture and equipment from the most smallest to the most popular retail stores. So today I'm reviewing the Tompkins 56 inch two drawer sideboard by Rosedorf Park. This product will be reviewed and given a score of one through 10. There are 10 categories total and each category can earn up to one full point. And as always, somewhere below this video in the description or comments, you can see the category list and beside each category, you can see the timestamp of where it's covered in this video. That way you have the option to quickly find those specific categories that are most important to you. As a reminder, the overall score does not reflect just the quality of the furniture, but also things like features and overall assembly experience. Now, before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel to catch all of our reviews and make sure to follow us on Instagram at prime underscore spaces, where we post completed photos and videos that will give you the inspiration you need when you're looking for a new piece of furniture or equipment. So without further ado, let's jump into the review. So this sideboard is listed for $400 on Wayfair.com and it comes in two colors which are antique gray and white. Now there are a handful of factors at play here affecting the price I believe. Things like drawer and shelf space which we'll get into later, overall solidness and the design. I think the design aspect puts it over the top. I really like the country feel it had to it and the classic frosted glass doors I think gave it a mid to high end feel. So it looked really nice and it certainly did not feel cut rate or thrift once it was all built. It also had 4.2 out of 5 star rating on Wayfair and when you couple that with some really nice lifestyle photos I'd say $400 seems worth it uh, for its function and certainly the aesthetic. Therefore this sideboard or buffet earns one full point in the price category. So this piece weighs 88 pounds which isn't excessively heavy for a sideboard given the amount of parts and by parts I mean the actual furniture panels that make up the majority of the weight, not things like knobs, screws, and hinges. Now you might look at the furniture and assume that because it's relatively thin, 15 and a half inches deep to be exact, that it may be susceptible to tipping over. But you have to remember, this piece of furniture is meant to be placed alongside of a wall which gives it its support while it stands. The overall width of the sideboard is 56 inches which is pretty substantial. Nonetheless, because the depth is only 15 and a half inches, I would highly suggest that you install the anti-tipping hardware that attaches the hardware to the wall in order to avoid any accidents. In this case with our customer, uh, they requested that I not install the anti-tipping hardware uh, in order to avoid having to screw or drill into their wall. But before they made their decision, I explained to them the mistake that some customers make, which is not anticipating somebody bumping into or slightly tipping the furniture and potentially knocking an item off the sideboard, not necessarily knocking over the sideboard itself. I see it all the time, you know, some people are just averse to screwing or drilling into their walls and if that's you, then I would just encourage you or anyone else to be very cautious. All in all, even if the sideboard is standing alone, it's still pretty sturdy and has some good weight to it. So I'll give it one full point for the sturdiness category. So the dimensions for the sideboard are 32 inches in height, 56 inches in width and 15 and a half inches in depth from the wall, which is just enough space to host certain household items. Now its intended use is for showcasing accent pieces on top of the sideboard like a vase or a lamp. And on the inside, you can store things like dinnerware that you use on special occasions like plates, utensils, wine glasses, placemats, things of that nature. And if you're looking to use this sideboard for items like the ones I just mentioned, then there's a lot of storage for you to make use of. The good thing is that the furniture takes up more space along the wall than it does the space coming off the wall. So the less it protrudes from the wall, the more floor space it frees up. So for what it's intended for, I'll give the sideboard one full point in the size category. 
So the sideboard is made of medium density fiberboard or MDF. And if you've watched any of our other reviews, you know how I feel about MDF. MDF is known to contain VOC and VOC stands for volatile organic compounds. And these are a large group of chemicals which can cause irritation to the lung and the eyes. Now VOCs are found in many products used to build and maintain homes. The issue is the chemicals get released or off gassed into the indoor airs, it gets circulated and you end up breathing it in. I don't know how likely you are or not to experience any health issues because of it, whether it be serious or mild, but the idea that this furniture exposes you to harmful chemicals continuously over a period of time isn't a positive by any stretch. They probably regulate the amount of MDF that can be used in furniture in order to minimize the risk, but because it's a known hazard, this sideboard gets negative one point in the materials category. Now for the features, the sideboard comes equipped with two upper drawers that are great for storing smaller, loose items. So if it's being used in the dining room, you can store your utensils and placemats. You can also store things like coasters, corkscrews, bottle openers, and drink stirrers. The main storage cabinet has two storage shelves, each 12 and a quarter, roughly by 26 inches, that essentially create four shelf compartments overall. Now the shelves can be adjusted to one of three heights, so you can maximize the amount of space to store items like plates, serving dishes, wine glasses, or anything that needs a home. And I think one of the coolest features on the sideboard are the frosted glass double doors that really make the whole thing pop. And lastly, located on the bottom of the sideboard are four floor levelers, which allow you to ensure that the item is perfectly even on the ground. You can also place small round furniture pads directly onto the levelers, which will make sliding or moving the furniture easier without having to lift it or scratch your floors. So for the features category, this sideboard earns one full point. So the packaging for the sideboard wasn't bad. Uh, they used two layers of styrofoam that line up along the sides of the interior of the shipping box and they use plastic covers to protect the corners of the box. They also use a thin foam material to individually wrap the furniture pieces and they also use cardboard to separate the furniture pieces as they stack them inside the box. But here is where I really got annoyed. The styrofoam is so cheaply made and it showed. Upon opening the box, there were so many small pieces of styrofoam scattered inside of the box which ended up making a huge mess on the floor of the customer's home. Not only that, the styrofoam easily sticks to the furniture pieces when you take it out of the box. So this meant I had to spend some time to clean up the styrofoam before I could even start the assembly. The styrofoam also sticks to your clothes and so I was stuck dusting off my clothes you know, before getting into my car to leave and I still ended up bringing some of it into my home. With styrofoam that cheap, it makes sense that they would double layer the styrofoam because one layer wouldn't be a effective in protecting the furniture. The furniture did arrive damage free so I won't be overly critical but the styrofoam used was a bit on the cheap side and messy so for that I'll give a half a point for the product packaging category. So in terms of hardware count, there are 19 different types of hardware that is used for this sideboard. And so this makes the packaging that much more important as it relates to saving time. Each of the hardware parts are individually packaged and clearly labeled for easy organization and identification. Essentially, what this allows me to do is quickly jump into actually doing the assembly. I don't have to involve myself with a piece of hardware until the step that it's actually being used. One potential problem that could occur is the sticker that labels the hardware falling off. This could cause some confusion if the stickers for two separate size screws both fall off. If that were to happen, you can just identify the screws using the hardware parts list that is shown in the instruction manual. However, this was not the case for this hardware packaging, so I won't knock them for something that didn't happen. As a professional, I'm much more interested in the way a manufacturer organizes the hardware parts than I am interested in the number of hardware parts. So all in all, they did a good job with hardware packaging, so I'll give them one full point in the hardware packaging category. Now, as a friendly disclaimer, okay, the ease of assembly category is scored as it pertains to my skill set as a professional. Different skill sets and interpretations of instructions may vary. That being said, everything from the hardware pieces to the furniture pieces are laid out and identified pretty clearly, and they do a really good job of breaking down the assembly of the sideboard into manageable sub-assemblies. The guide uses only picture illustrations, but the illustrations are very clear. I know sometimes picture illustrations can be confusing if 
too many steps are jammed into one illustration. However, that's not the case here. It's pretty straightforward in following the sub-assembly steps by picture and some of the pictures are even zoomed in or blown up to clearly show how the hardware furniture parts are supposed to be oriented in order to attach the furniture pieces correctly. I was able to get through this assembly very easily and in good time. It took me about an hour uh, and so any assembly that can be completed in under an hour and 15 minutes is a major plus. So for that, this sideboard gets one full point in the ease of assembly category. Now, if everything is assembled properly, then the sideboard should be relatively easy to use. The three factors that will determine this are the drawer tracks being installed properly, the frosted glass doors hinges being installed properly, and of course the shelves. The drawers were able to open and close smoothly, and the door hinges are relatively simple to install. However, they will need to be adjusted so that all of the doors are the same height. The doors being the same height not only help for the aesthetic, but to also ensure that the doors can open open and close properly without scraping the top and bottom panel. As you can see here in the instruction manual, the door can be adjusted up, down, inward, and outward. Other than that, the only adjustment you may look to make would be changing the height of the shelves, depending on what you plan to store on top of them. And changing the height of the shelves is as simple as pulling out the shelving pins on which the shelves rest. All in all, I didn't run into anything that would make the sideboard difficult to use, and so for that, the sideboard gets one full point in the ease of use category. As I mentioned before, the sideboard is 88 pounds, which isn't too heavy for a piece this size. Now, obviously you won't be able to pick this sideboard up and just move it without at least two strong people. However, what I would suggest is putting small round furniture pads under the levelers, as I mentioned in the features category, or place a moving blanket underneath the furniture. This will allow you to slide the furniture instead of having to lift it. In order to do this, you would partially lift each of the four corners of the sideboard to get the furniture moving blanket underneath in order to push the sideboard to the desired location. But depending on your strength level, you may need another or a couple of other people to push it. I know the sideboard isn't meant to be portable per se, but you can also remove the shelves and the drawers from the cabinet in order to make the sideboard lighter and easier to move. All things considered, this sideboard earns a half a point in the portability category. So that concludes the review for this Tompkins 56 inch wide two drawer sideboard, which got an overall score of seven out of 10. The two areas where I felt that the sideboard really fell short were the MDF containing VOCs uh, used to make the furniture pieces and the really cheap styrofoam packaging that really left a mess. And again, to be clear, this score does not reflect just the quality of the furniture, but also the essential features and overall assembly experience. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to subscribe to this channel because it lets me know to continue making these review videos. And I also urge you to leave in the comment section any suggestions for other categories that you would like to be reviewed on a future video. And finally, please follow us on Instagram at prime underscore spaces where we post pictures and videos of completed furniture and equipment assemblies to help give you the inspiration you need when choosing the right furniture or equipment for the home or the office. Till next time, catch you on the next build.